dropping the dive and the catch is made. Whatever happens, guys, again, it's going to be a great day. Very proud of you guys. Right, let's have some great fun today. Huh? Welcome to the Little League World Series on ESPN. A lot of fun tonight. It's a win in advance game between Kansas, the state champions from Pittsburgh Little League and North Dakota and the city of Fargo here at the Little League Central Region Complex in Whitestown, Indiana. Because of the modified double elimination format, both of these teams still very much alive, but the loser will end its season sometime tonight. Along with the double elimination format, ages 10 to 12 play the game. Six inning games, unless we're extended. Two thirds conventional field size, 46 by 60, and minimum mandatory play. To this point, nobody has been eliminated in the Midwest, and the two top teams will meet Thursday for the right to go to Williamsport in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Hastings, Nebraska. So, Kansas versus North Dakota in a showdown here tonight. And the Kansas team will begin with the Killer Seas, managed by Walter Bush, Colton Simmons, Colton Smith-Heisler, and Christian Krogan. Then the pitcher, Brooke Weimers, Jamarcus Davis, Brady Bettega, Will Schremer, coach's son, Maxwell Bush, and Alex Hinspeeder. They'll get a look at another left-hander. We've seen a lot of them in this tournament. This is Dylan Dill Salberg. Favorite team, the Chicago Cubs. Favorite actor is Vin Diesel. Only 5-1, but he packs a punch with a pitch, and he'll try to carry his ball and his team in this game. He pitched the state championship, got a win there, so he's uh, played well in the big games, and he's got a big one tonight. Long-distance travel for the folks from Pittsburgh, Kansas, Hutchinson Little League, and also from North Dakota. They've been hanging out here all week and hoping that uh, their stay can be extended. Good to have you along with us tonight for the ride. Third of three, beginning roughly three and a half hours later than originally scheduled. Maybe closer to two and a half, considering it was four o'clock start. Rain delay today and a front that held things up from 10 a.m. till 1.30 p.m. for the start of the first game. And then, obviously, everything else got backed up. Colton Simmons' uncle is now two decades with the Cincinnati Bengals. What a great longevity that this guy has got with his uncle and with the team. He's actually, speaking of his uncle, Darren, special teams coordinator. Colton's older brother played in the 2018 regionals. He's ahead on the count, three balls, no strikes. Home plate umpire is Scott Strockey. Phil King at first, Kyle Watson second, Greg Wright third, Prince Lowe alternate. All volunteer. Umpires get their compensation when they're going ahead to do college baseball and other things at the umpire, but uh, this is a labor love. Three balls, two strikes. Colton Smithheiser would be next. And a nice job of Dylan Salber coming, coming back from three balls and no strikes. 23, second baseman, second Colton, Colton Smith-Heisler. Smith Parents, Damian and Katie. Big family, five sisters and brothers, ages one through 10. They are Braven, Cannon, Skyly, Hattie, Hartley. Strike one. This kid did not miss on his Kansas assessments for math and reading. Got them all right. And he loves statistics, so that probably didn't hurt any, huh? Oh, and two. To be followed by the shortstop, Christian Kroger. Turning out to be a beautiful night here in Whitestown. Toward right field. Hauled in, two outs. Noah Schmidt with a catch, and now Christian Kroger, batting in the third spot, will step up. Christian Du Krogan, who won the league's home run derby with 12, power hitter. And he's got some speed as well. Christian 0 for 3 in the opening game, but a strikeout. Game where Minnesota handcapped, uh, hand, 
And he capped uh, probably what they were trying to do pitching-wise, then handcuffed Kansas early in the game, putting them in a huge deficit, and then winning 10-2. Top of the lineup, so far one for 10 in the region. Now two for 11, base hit center field. Christian aboard with his first hit in the tournament to bring up Brock Weimers, the pitcher hitting in the four spot. Brock 0 for three in the loss to Minnesota. Nine, the pitcher, Brock Weimers. Walter Bush switching the one and two hitters in this game from the loss to Minnesota. That's a fair ball. That's also a nice play at first. Well done by Peyton Amsbaugh. We'll introduce you to the batting order of North Dakota in a moment. Starting lineup for Fargo Little League. Beckett Gigstad, Giggy will lead off, then Emrick Netlin. Kate Nelson had the only hit in their one run, one nothing loss early. We'll bat third. Skyler Burkhart, cleanup, fourth. Dylan Salberg, the pitcher, fifth. Then Peyton Amsbaugh, Noah Schmidt, Drew Kalbus, and Henry Schrum. Does a pretty good job of getting on base. Rock Weimers will oppose. He is the anchor of this pitching staff. Stands 5'3, 118. Hey, one of my favorite TV shows as well, SpongeBob. Probably could sing the theme if we uh, put him up to it. Back at Gickstad to lead right off. Now for Kansas, number nine, Brock Weimers. And leading off the bottom of the first for North Dakota, center fielder, number seven, Beckett. His dad, the manager, Grant, coaching at third base. Corey Salberg, the coach at first. Andy Calvis in the dugout. Any roster with 12 players or more is allowed to have three coaches. We've seen a couple of teams so far, though, without 12, like Michigan, and therefore have to use a player on the bases as a coach and just two adults. Two strikes, Emmerich Netlin to follow. One out. Sixteen left fielder Emrick Netlin. Got a walk-off double in the tournament. Pretty good hockey player, as are many of these North Dakota Little League baseball players. Good looking swing here in baseball. Try to get North Dakota jump started here as he takes a strike. Now two strikes. Emick in the first game and a one nothing loss to Hastings of Nebraska. 0 for 2 and a couple of strikeouts. I'll be a great mystery to a lot of these coaches when their teams do so well in state. Not being able to hit as well here. Line drive to Christian Krogan, two outs. Okay, Nelson who had the only hit as we mentioned when we went over the top nine in the batting order. Nebraska with Hunter Nepple shutting him down on one hit and striking out 11. 
in the game that was decided in the first inning when Coco Raider homered. And Neppel pretty much did the rest. Win and advance game tonight. Loser is out of the tournament, and the winner is coming back. Play some elimination games like tomorrow night against Missouri at 7 o'clock. And the quadruple header on ESPN Plus tomorrow, not to be affected by weather. It's supposed to be hot and sunny. If Caden reaches, we'll get to the third baseman, Skylar Burkhart. Two balls, two strikes, and two away. Torch short. Christian Krogan gets a put out and an assist. And we take a break to go to the second. Very efficient 12 pitches. We, we might add. Back in June of last season, and in fact, while the pandemic was in full rise, the construction went on, finished up in June of this year. Ribbon cutting ceremony toward the end of June, plus an honorary game between Ronsburg and Zionsville Little Leagues, which are located pretty close to the ballpark. As we start the second, Jamarcus Davis reaches base. And will bring up Brady Bettega, who was one for one in Kansas defeat and also scored a run. Center fielder, number six, Brady Bettega. And since the dedication game, the only people to play on this ballpark are softball teams in the central region that now have gone on to Greenville, North Carolina, and the Little League World Series. And the kids you're seeing here. Towards second, out for one over the first. That's a double play. Drew Calvis to Caden Nelson to Peyton Emsbar. Well done by North Dakota. Two outs. Third baseman, number two, Will Schremer. Now Will Schremer, the third baseman, batting in the seventh spot. Well, says the coolest place to visit is Disney World. Oh, we like hearing that. Parents are Joe and Chris. There's a Marietta sports, football, basketball, track, baseball. And the state semifinals had a big bat. A couple of hits and a home run. Drove in one of the two runs for Kansas the other day. Plus had a strikeout. Never know what you're going to get in an elimination game. We've had some things that have gotten pretty wild. High scoring games. Several mistakes made. As teams are winding down, at least one of the teams, it's season. The theme of the tournament, for the most part, has been really good pitching. Although we've had a couple of breakout games by Michigan, Minnesota with their offense. Three up and three down in this inning, though, even though it started with a hit batsman. Double play, eliminated two. Bottom of the second, four, five, and six for North Dakota. Wow, that's pretty good. Today. <laughs> I 
Oh, those those fat heads, those are great. Welcome back to the Little League World Series on ESPN, presented by T-Mobile. Jim Barber with you. Bottom of the second inning, middle half of the North Dakota lineup. Coached by Grant Gigstad. This one off the pitcher's glove, going to be a tough play. And a base hit for Skylar Burkhart to start the North Dakota second. Two hits, check that one hit in its first game. Already matching that total is North Dakota with this hit right here. The pitcher, Dylan Salberg, who's worked through the first couple of innings with a couple of strikeouts and a double play ball. Well executed there, running a scoring position with one out. For the first baseman in the sixth spot, Peyton Emsbaugh. Eight no official bats in the one nothing loss to Hastings. Takes a call strike. Fargo's Little League expanding and growing as we speak as they have added a facility in town, an indoor facility called the Attic. Six batting cages, 11,000 square feet, baseball diamond for training all year round as it gets a bit cold up north. And that is helping immensely the growth of Little League in that area. Carson Wentz of the Colts is their adopted son, former NDSU North Dakota State star. And right now, unfortunately, for the Colts on the shelf due to injury. Two balls, two strikes, one out, and a runner, Skyler Burkhart at second. And now two outs and the second strikeout of the game for Brock Weimers. We'll leave it up to number 11, the right fielder, Noah Schmidt. Good pitching has really handcuffed some pretty good hitters in this tournament. And Weimers. Getting the third strike there for his second. Noah Schmidt, parents Travis and Casey. Loves the NFL and someday wants to be a sports announcer for it. Good luck, buddy. RBI double in the state championship game and he loves the flow of his hair. <laughs> Line drive to third base. Well hit. But right at Will Schremer. End of two. Good one so far. Don't score. North Dakota and the Will Bass in the second inning. No runs, one hit. One runner left on base. Hits count for Brock Weavers of Kansas. In the inning, nine. Game total, 21, 2, 1. At LittleLeague.org slash Fanzo. Softball just about to get underway on Wednesday with a local Indianapolis area team in Zionsville, along with the champions from Daniel Boone Little League in Missouri, Columbia, both competing, both playing on opening day in the double elimination tournament. So good luck to the ladies that we saw a couple of weeks here in Whitestown.
Top of the third for Kansas. And Max Bush, one for two with an RBI, walking a strikeout in the opening game in the opening loss just a couple of days ago. That game with Minnesota was tied early at 2-2 in the third, and then Kansas blew it open late. If you missed it earlier today, Illinois got its victory to move into the semifinals of the Great Lakes region. And Indiana was beaten soundly by Michigan. So it's Michigan and Illinois for the right to go to Williamsport in the Great Lakes. Ball four. Second walk of the regional for Max Bush. Second inning in a row that Kansas has put its leadoff hitter aboard. Left fielder, number 12, Alex Hinspeter. Here's Alex Hinspeter, the left fielder. Caught the final out in Baxter to clinch the state. Parents are Travis and Sarah and brothers Andrew and Anthony. Nickname Bud. Bud awaits the one strike pitch. Winner of this game to play Missouri tomorrow night in yet another win or go home game. Force at second for one. Get the lead runner. Alex Hinspeter now becomes the base runner with one out. We go back to the top. And Colton Simmons. So Drew Kalbus gets the sure out. To shortstop Caden Nelson. This combination turned to double play in the previous inning. And we're set to have a pinch hitter for Kansas as Jaden Beltran is stepping in. Beltran. Big Clark power capability. <laughs> Kansas managed five hits in the loss to Minnesota, but committed three errors. In North Dakota's loss, Fargo managed just one hit and lost one nothing. And that again was on a home run in the very first inning. Two balls, no strikes, with a man on and one out in a scoreless third. Colton Smithheisler would bat next. Four pitches. Beltran on to first. Inspeeder now to second. Second walk of the inning. And here's Colton Smithheisler. One of the killer C's at the front of the lineup. Colton, Colton, and Christian. It'll be a law firm. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're a real thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Has this rally twice in the state tournament, one in the last of the eighth, 5-4 to beat Baxter Springs. Actually beat Baxter twice in the tournament. Home of Bill Russell, star with the Los Angeles Dodgers, played all 18 seasons in L.A. For retiring. Good stop by Henry Shrum, keeping the runners where they're at with a ball and two strikes. Has waited to very close to 1.30 today when the rain finally cleared to attend the very first game. And then when Brownsburg played in game two, it's practically a home game for that little league. Place was packed. Folks cleared the field and cleared the stadium as suggested. And then fans now in for game three and a call third strike now to Colton Smithheisler. Third strikeout of the game for pitcher Dylan Silberg. And for Salberg, he's had one strikeout in each inning. Good looking pitch. 
on two strikes. Christian Krogan out of the plate. Had a base hit the last time up. In this region, in two games, Kansas has six hits and has scored a couple of runs. Favorite athlete, Patrick Mahomes. Is, remind everybody, we're getting very close to the NFL season. Already had Hall of Fame game and the inductions exhibition play to take place shortly, and then on to the regular season. Pitch outside, one and two, two outs. Big moment early in the game. With two on base and two outs. Base hit right field, runner to third base. They will send him. He will score, one nothing Kansas. RBI hit, second hit of the game for Christian Krogan. Max Bush scoring on the play, and Kansas strikes first. Christian having a solid game here. On the base hit to right field, Noah Schmidt. Cut off by second base and then onto the plate, and just not enough in time. Pitch count, by the way, is at 41 for Dylan Salberg, 21 for the opposition, and Brock Weemers. How much of that is a consideration when you're playing in a win or go home game is pretty much up to the manager as they may do everything they can to stick with an ace. Michigan, meanwhile, blowing out two opponents so far has done it by committee, saving everybody for the bigger games, which begin on Thursday in the semis in the Great Lakes. Runners right now at first and second, and one in for Kansas in the third. In Major League Baseball, if you've ever attended a game in Cincinnati, for example, they'll put up a sign when a person on the Reds walks and scores Kind of a shot of a ghost saying, walks will haunt you. And a walk here has turned into a run. And it seems to be particularly lethal to the team issuing it when it comes to the leadoff hitter. Two balls and a strike with two outs. Now three and one. Hitters pitch here for Brock Weemers. 0 for 4 in two games. Right center field. Going to score one. And while he was tempted, runner headed to third and held up. So Brock Weemers comes through. Christian Krogan stopping at third. 2 0 Kansas. Some clutch two-out hitting by Hutchinson Little League. This one was stroked. Once again, another ball for Noah Schmidt to field. And a great swing going opposite field. Schmidt did a nice job of tracking it down. That could have gone to the fence and scored another run easily. But Dave Weimers, assistant coach at third base, Wisely held up the runners. They got the ball in quickly. Well, what you expect and certainly what you want out of your three and four hitters. Combined three for four tonight and a couple runs batted in. And run scoring hits after two outs. Jamarcus Davis, the right fielder, is the seventh. Kansas player to bat the inning. Runner headed down to second, no throw. Look and see the stolen base. 
which puts Brock Weimers at second. Christian Krogan remains at third. A hit could score two more. Count now three and one. Jamarcus, his favorite player, the great Jackie Robinson. Comes from a family of eight brothers and sisters. Full count coming up. Reminds us, where do you keep your mitt while you're driving? Well, of course, the glove compartment. <laughs> well done, Jamarcus. Big pitch here in the game. Out on strikes. Two in the inning for Kansas. Bottom of the order for North Dakota in the last of the third. Discount for Dylan Salberg of North Dakota in the inning, 32. Game total, 52, 5-2. Jeez, is there anybody left? 32 pitch inning results in two runs for Kansas and the early jump in this game. Jim Barber back with you in the Midwest Region elimination game. Drew Calvis set the lead off, eighth hitter in the North Dakota lineup. Trying to find their offense. All players and managers, coaches have to go through COVID testing. It's an every other day thing for each of the teams. And then they await the results. So far, nothing positive to eliminate any of the teams, which is wonderful news. And yet, when you chat with the coaches, it is a fear. In fact, it's one of their biggest fears. But so far, so good. Two balls, two strikes. Drew Calvis. Henry Shrum, Beckett, Gickstad, set here for North Dakota in the third. And travel has limited some of the fan support here, particularly long distances because of restriction on the amount of people that can come here and some of the quarantining that has to go on. Opposite field, base hit. Nice job, Drew Calvis on a two-strike pitch, leading off the third. I see a lot of good opposite field hitting in this region. The catcher, Henry Shrum. In fact, in a previous game for Michigan, Lucas Farner, right-handed hitter, had four hits to right field. Off the wild pitch, bounces back nicely, but not enough time for catcher Max Bush to throw out. Drew Calbus got a great bounce. And nearly threw him out at second base. It will go as a wild pitch. That is a foul tip. Because of the emphasis on the pandemic and the fact that players are not allowed to get together with other teams like they would normally, or maybe do some sightseeing like they certainly would do normally, It puts a little bit more pressure on the coaches because players aren't allowed to hang out or stay with their parents. So the coaches, in effect, become not only coaches, but uh, also pseudo parents. It does allow the parents a little breathing time for a change in travel, but at the same time, puts a little more pressure on the kids as they can get just a tad stir crazy after a few days in a hotel. So a lot of them get outside for a little bit, a little wiffle ball. One bounce to third base, bobble, no chance to get anybody. Tough for Will Schremer, plenty of time, but the air now puts two aboard with nobody out in a North Dakota third inning. And Fargo's getting a chance to answer. So play probably makes, makes a million times. But wisely at that point did not throw it away. 
Back at Gickstead, back to the top of the order. Struck out in the first 0 for 3 here in the regional. Giggy from Discovery Middle School. Says he must wear black eyeliner every game or else. Down the first baseline, what a great bunt. And good coverage on the play by Brock Weemers to get him out by about a step. But the runners advance into scoring position now with one out in the third. So job well done on the sacrifice. In fact, Beckett Gickstack came pretty close to beating this out. Rock Weimers had to get off the mound and quickly toss and got him by a step. Isaac Moose Mossbrucker. Pinch hitting here. Moose is 5'8", 143. Parents Amanda and Devin. Got a chance to tie the game. 0-2. Drew Kalbus running at third, Henry Schrum at second. And Moose stays alive. Winner gets Missouri tomorrow night. And another win in advance or winner go home game. And the loser, unfortunately, will be going home. Headed yes. to right field. Caught. Runner at third had to hold, but then. On the throw in, a runner scores. Well, a tough break for Kansas there. Jamarcus Davis made the catch, and the runners had been frozen. But as the ball got away, that was enough to score Drew Kalpas with the first run. Davis plays it well, bobbled for a second. Now in the throw, it's between catcher and third base, and at that time, recognizing a situation that's good, Drew Calvis ran home and scored, so that'll be an error on the throw. And two errors now in the game for Kansas. Here's Caden Nelson. So Mossbrucker, Moose, gets a sacrifice fly and a run batted in. And the tying run is at third base in Henry Shrum. Good competitive game in this win or go home. Atmosphere. North Dakota already doubling the amount of hits it had the other day with two. Swing and a miss and a pitch in the dirt, one and two. To the backstop, and the runner decides to go back, which is wise. The distance between home plate and the backstop isn't very deep. So that ball comes back quickly, and that is the benefit on wild pitches to a catcher. On the 2-2, right center field hit well. That'll tie the game. Caden Nelson around second. Caden Nelson in the third with a triple. And North Dakota has found its offense. They have taken a while, but after Kansas scored twice, Fargo has matched. 15, third baseman, Skyler Burkhardt. So by benefit of a couple of errors in the inning, the game now is tied. Now Skyler Burkhart, infield single off the pitcher's glove in the second. This is a ballpark because it's bigger than typical little leagues that these kids play in. 
Here comes the runner trying to score. They threw back to third, and that's not going to get it done. Hey, Nelson found his way to home plate, and North Dakota now takes its first lead. And the design of a play like that is to try to run the runner back to third base. And Caden Nelson, recognizing that the ball was going back, was able to come home and score. Productive third for Fargo. Trailing 2 0. It scores three. And this is how it happened. Mm -hmm. Presented by T Mobile. 3-2 game as we go to the fourth. Winner moves on to tomorrow and another winner go home game. The loser is eliminated. A couple of Pittsburgh errors in the third benefits the cause of Fargo, North Dakota. Here's number 88, Frankie T-Bone Stroud. Turned 12 about a week ago. Parents are Brad and Charlie. His favorite athlete who's doing some rehab right now with Triple A Louisville, Mike the Moose Moustakis. Toward first base, one out. Pull the ball right in the direction of Peyton Amsbaugh. And Will Schremer will step to the plate. Will's one for three in the regional, run scored, and a run batted in. Well hitting in the seventh position here for Kansas, behind for the first time tonight. Each team with three hits in the game, but the aforementioned two errors played big in North Dakota's three-run rally. Earlier today, Michigan beat Indiana 9-1, Illinois 5, Kentucky 1 in the Great Lakes region. Those two teams, the winners are moving on for a showdown. Later this week in the semifinals. While well, Kentucky and Indiana will be fighting for their lives here shortly. Four games tomorrow. Hope you can join us on ESPN Plus starting 10 Eastern, 9 Central, and 8 in the Mountain Time Zone. Off speed pitch. Just missed, 2 and 2. We'll play umpire again Scott Strachey, Phil King at first, Kyle Watson second. And Greg Wright at third with Prince Lowe as the alternate. Two outs in the inning. Five strikeouts down the game for Dylan Stahlberg. Find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action, join the conversation with hashtag LLWS. Those folks are probably checking that out as we speak. Ashton, Botter. Ashton Lee Botter will step in as a pinch hitter for Max Bush. This kid wins the lottery. He's going to give a third of it to the parents, a third to his medical future. And third to his future overall. Says Little League Baseball, honor just to participate. Two balls, one strike, but two outs here in the Kansas fourth. Now three and two. Dylan Salberg has struck out at least one in every inning. Now has six for the game. 
Got him in order for the first time tonight. Strikeout's the name of this game, along with a few other things. And they'll meet later this week for the right to go to Williamsport at Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Hastings, Nebraska. Back to live action, back to a line drive right off the bat of Dylan Salberg, a bullet. Caught by Brock Weimers, one out. Hit well, and headed to center field, and Weimers with a big grin on his face. Look what I, look what I found. Pitching for North Dakota, number 12, Liam Miller. Liam Miller will get a chance to hit here for Peyton Emsbaugh. With North Dakota had 3-2 in the sixth inning game of elimination. Totals are 3-3-0 and for North Dakota and for Kansas, 2-3-2. Two, North Dakota had some extensive fundraising to get here. Pretty good distance, plus a number of days in a hotel. Raised over $20,000, including roughly $1,200 by way of a uh, root beer float stand. And that stand originally set up was affected by, of all things, smoke from the Canadian wildfires. So a bit of it was tabled. Parents got on social media for help, and help came. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Noah Schmidt, the scheduled hitter next. That is a foul ball. But Liam did the right thing, headed toward first base. Sometimes you need to hear it from two umpires instead of one. Count remains two and two. It's like in football, you know, you don't stop until you hear the whistle. Here, you don't stop until you hear the umpires. Full count. Torch shortstop. Christian Krogan has been money from that spot, two outs. Couple assists down the game for him and a put out. Everybody gets a chance to play and get to the outfield. So right now, North Dakota to its bench, Peyton Asner, who has great home run distance stepping up. North Dakota was retired in order in the first. That's been the only time so far. These games played in the Midwest region. Brock Weaver is now for the game. He is at 58 pitches. Well, a nice souvenir for the moment. But by Little League requests, balls have to be returned. I recall after 9-11, when everybody was encouraged to be a little nicer to folks, Major League Baseball instituted a plan where souvenirs, particularly at the end of the inning, went right to the stands. Three up and three down. On to the fifth as the drama starts to pick up a bit. Mm -hmm. 
Outing here as we approach the fifth inning in the Midwest region. Four games tomorrow. Ohio and Indiana, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Kentucky. And Missouri against the winner of this game. And all four games will be elimination games. Should be a whole lot of excitement. Four teams will prolong their season and four will be out. Jason J. O. Owens will start off the fifth as a pinch hitter. He'll turn 12 in less than a couple of weeks. Said he'd love to beat our former president, Barack Obama. His manager said, great teammate, big time personality. Trying to start something here in the Kansas fifth with two innings to go. One ball, two strikes. Lineup gets turned over back to Colton Simmons after J.O. hits. On the drop third down to first base and it is in time, one out. Strikeouts continue to add up for pitcher Dylan Sauber. Now seven in the game. First baseman number three, Colton Simmons. Now the leadoff hitter, Colton Simmons. Colton tonight, 0 for 1 with a strikeout, 0 for 4 in the regional. Of the four games we mentioned, two will be in the Midwest tomorrow. That's Iowa and Minnesota at 1. Eastern time and Missouri against the winner of this game at seven Eastern time. Opposite field base hit. Colton Simmons now heading into second base and he is the tying run. His first hit of the regional and a very important one at that. So the combination of a hit and likely an error allowing him to go to second base. Here's a chance now for Colton Smith Heisler. Killer C is trying to rally the team here. Colton one for five in the regional, batting 200. Big inning for Kansas, time running out. But still enough time left. From the full wind up, the next delivery. To the gap. It's gonna tie the game. The killer sees strike again. Stand up double Colton Smith Heisler. 3 3 game. Top of the order tonight with a couple of hits, runs scored, and an RBI. And another look as lefty faces righty. Hitting them where they ain't. And in this ballpark, there's a lot of place to hit it. Fun game tonight, tied now at three. Let's see if we're gonna have some changes here. Dylan Salberg has now thrown 75 pitches. Right, 
For the moment, does not appear a change is in order. But we'll wait. Henry Shrum right now. I don't know. It looks like an equipment adjustment. Grant Gigstad, the manager, Andy Kalbus, Corey Salberg, the coaches. Work continuing, and it will until everything we're set to do. As the coaches are called upon for a myriad of things. You know, and they kind of joke about it, the fact that they're serving as uh, backup parents due to the pandemic and its restrictions of fraternizing. They joke that the parents are getting a few days off, and some of them said they don't mind. <laughs> Third part of the Killer C is Christian Krogan. Top three hitters in the lineup all have hits. And Christian is two for two with a run batted in. Go ahead, run now at second base in a 3-3 game. Dylan Salberg's night just about to be done as he's approaching 85. Well, both of these teams have found their offense. North Dakota's probably in more of a concern for it than Kansas was, having scored a couple runs the other day and five hits. Pitch 79 coming up. And Christian's aboard for the third time today. He's had a perfect night. Here's Brock Weavers. Number nine, the pitcher, Brock Weavers. And an RBI hit with two outs back in the third. At that time, it put Kansas up 2 nothing. That may drop as well. Base hit in the center field. Great throw in and blocked, so it's station to station baseball. Nice job of recovering the outfield and down by home plate, but the bases are now loaded. Brock Weimer's having a good night at the plate with two hits. Number five, right fielder, Jamarcus Davis. Runner at second wanted to make sure that the ball wasn't caught. And therefore, Stopped at third. That's Colton Smith Heisler. And probably best to uh, to be certain in that instance. Out of the zone, Jamarcus Davis, strike one. Big opportunity here, though, with the bases loaded and Kansas a chance to regain the lead. As we go back and forth in this elimination game. Brock Weimer's couple of hits tonight. Christian Krogan, two hits. Hits each for Simmons and Smith Eisler. So Marcus Davis trying to get his first hit. And a head on the count, two balls and a strike. Three balls and a strike, and this will be the last batter that Dylan Salberg faces as he is about to throw pitch 85. But more important, with the bases loaded, he is behind on the count. Good theater here, bases loaded. 3-2 pitch coming. One out in the inning, here we are. Toward left field and carrying. Up against the fence, one will score. Two will score. Davis a long single, batting home a couple, and Kansas now is on top. Some real clutch hitting in this game as Davis 
The left-handed batter goes to the opposite field. Scores Colton Smith-Heisler and Christian Krogan. Dylan Salberg gets a hug at the mound, knowing his night is done. And with that, we'll introduce you to the new pitcher when we come back. 5-3 Kansas here in the fifth. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the concession stand will be closing in about five minutes. Walter Bush says, Jamarcus Jamel Davis has big time power. Got a big time hit here too. With the bases loaded, scored a couple. A long single, and Kansas now is on top once again by a score of 5-3. In the meantime, Dylan Salberg's night is done as he reached 85 pitches. And now to the bench we go for North Dakota. It's Skyler Burkhart, the right-hander. For Kansas, re-entering, now batting, 88, Frank Stroud. Here's T-Bone, Frank the Tank Stroud. Strike one. Looking ahead to the North Dakota fifth, bottom of the order, eight and nine hitters, then back to the leadoff hitter. The winner gets Missouri tomorrow night at 7 Eastern in another Midwest elimination game. Still just one out in the inning, and that was the leadoff hitter who struck out. Now two outs. Bill Schremer now to the plate. One for four in the regional, a couple of strikeouts tonight. And has an RBI hit in this tournament as well. Still two runners on base. Opportunity for Kansas to increase the lead. Huge fan of actor Nicolas Cage. Face with a two strike count with two outs and teammates on first and second. Pitcher Skyler Burkhart. This goes about his business. And spends a lot of time uh, to the benefit of his family with his sister. Said he'd love to go pro MLB someday, but he's a pretty fair hockey player too. Perhaps he'll have options. Count is now full. Runners will be off after the pitch. And the bases are loaded. Second walk of the inning. Ninth man now to come to the plate. 
Max Bush stepping to the plate, has walked and scored in this game. Was pinch hit four in the fourth. Huge opportunity for Kansas to maybe bust this thing open. Two balls, no strikes. As he takes a look down at third base, let's see if the take is on, or if he's going to go after a good hitter's pitch here. Going after it, 2 1. Had a good cut, and you heard uh, one of the coaches say, You're right there, Max. Skyler Burkhart, full windup. And now three balls and a strike. A pitch away from losing them and a run. Kansas right now in position for a big inning. So, how about this? Full count, two outs, bases loaded. Something's going to happen here that's big. About to find out. Yeah! Big pitch. Skyler Burkhart comes through. So anybody's game as we go to the North Dakota fifth. Joe Linstead, number six. Has some NHL dreams down the line. Stepping in in a pinch hitting situation in the bottom of the North Dakota lineup. Trailing now for the second time tonight by two runs. Joe's 11 years of age, he'll turn 12 on September 16th. Has an emoji with a smiling kid with sunglasses. Glad to see that. One and two. Brock Weimers, 64 pitches now to second base. One out. Here's the catcher, Henry Schrum. And then back to the top, and Beckett Gickstad. One ball. We have had three multiple scoring innings, multiple runs in this game, two for Kansas. In the third, North Dakota had three in the bottom of the third, and then Kansas with the lead with three in the fifth. Could have been a lot worse for North Dakota, but a big time strikeout on a 3 2 pitch with the bases loaded. Got Fargo, North Dakota out of more trouble. Two balls and two strikes. Henry reached on an error in the third and eventually came around to score as Fargo took advantage of a couple of errors. And two outs. Brock Weimers on the threshold of pitching into the final inning. Ball rising up nicely and unable for Henry Schrum to get a hold of. Brock has now struck out four for the game. for North Dakota, number nine, Finn Bergson. Finn Burkseth will get a chance to hit here at the top of the order. Oh. 
One strike. Finn 0 for 1 in regional competition against Hunter Nepple and Nebraska the other day. Nepple was just uh, amazing. Struck out 11, just walked two, gave up one hit. Now the two strike pitch with two outs. Good contact by Bergseth to keep it going, if he can. Helps his dad coach his little brother's team, Rory. And apparently we're gonna have some interference call here, which is gonna allow Finn to get to first base. The left fielder, 16. It was two Kansas Nothing. errors in the third that put them in position, North Dakota to score. Might this turn out to be a factor? Amrick Netlin batting for the second time today. Show you what happened, folks. And the call made by home plate umpire Scott Strachey. Goes down as an error. The third of the game now for Kansas. Will it come back this time to bite him? Amrick Netlin down a strike, one and two. Representing the tie run here in the fifth. Reaches out and keeps it alive. Just a few minutes shy of 8 o'clock here in Whitestown, Indiana. On a lengthy day, it was set to start at 10. Didn't begin till 1.30 due to weather. We'll have four more for you tomorrow, and all are games in which teams have one loss. Two of the Great Lakes, 10 at four, and games at one and seven in the Midwest. Lineup is Ohio, Indiana at 10, Iowa, Minnesota at one, Wisconsin, Kentucky at four, and Missouri against the winner of this game at seven. Here again is one, two. Folks have seen a, an exciting one here tonight. Not decided yet. Amrick Dentlin now doing his best to push up the count. As total pitches now are 80. Kids getting a chance to get out of the hotel for a little bit, which is good, I'm sure. 81st pitch coming from Brock Weimers. Got two strikeouts in the inning. Interference doesn't cost them. To the sixth and final inning, unless we play extras. That's funny. <laughs> Are they aware of who is running it? Is that why? <laughs> Welcome back to the Little League Baseball World Series, Midwest region. On the journey to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Sixth and final inning, unless we're extended. Left fielder, number 12, Left fielder Alex, Alex Hinspeter will lead off the inning. Kansas five, North Dakota three. Defensively now for North Dakota, Netland, Gigstad, and Salberg. Left center and right. Oster, Nelson, Kalbus, Amsbaugh, third to first. Burkhardt pitching and Shrum catching. Alex 0 for 3 in the regional, the number nine hitter. Back to the pitcher. Now back to a very potent top of the order for Kansas. Colton Simmons. The 
first baseman, number three, Colton Simmons. Got hit in two at bats, scored a run. Colton Smith Heisler after him, a hit, scored a run. RBI, Christian Krogan. Also a couple of RBIs and perfect night. Port second base. Two outs now in the Kansas sixth. Glancing at the North Dakota sixth inning, it'll be Caden Nelson, Skyler Burkhart, and Dylan Salbert all scheduled to bat. Three, four, and five hitters. Probably the guys you want up when you need some runs. And it'll be North Dakota's last opportunity. Not only to win the game, but also keep the season alive. That is ball four. A hit batsman and a total of five walks delivered by North Dakota pitching tonight. To go along with the seven Kansas hits. Now Christian Krogan, the shortstop. Perfect night. Two for two, run scored, and an RBI. Skyler Burkhardt, who got out of a tough fifth inning, has now thrown five in a row outside the zone. He has 25th pitch. Now 3-0 and, oh, and having trouble finding a strike zone. Christian Krogan now has walked twice and been on base all four times. On the first he goes, Colton Smith-Heisler to second. For Brock Weimers, who has thrown 81 pitches tonight, will not be able to finish the game unless an extraordinary quick outs happen in each of the three at bats that he may face. Time being called. If you recall in the previous inning, Skyler walked a man, the bases were loaded, and got to a 3 1 count. And Jamarcus Davis came back with two strikes and got out of the inning. Let's see if he can dance out of this one and keep North Dakota within shouting distance. He's in a spot, though. After two outs, back to back walks, and he's missed on eight pitches in a row. Weimers is already two for three with an RBI. To left field. End of the inning. Last chance for North Dakota with the key to its batting order coming up. Four chances in the top half of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits. Two runners left on base. This counts to Skyler Burkhardt of North Dakota. In the inning, 13, game total 28. <laughs> Try to close it out. Keep the Kansas season alive. He pitched in the loss to Minnesota. Inning in the third, a lot of couple of runs, couple of hits. Walk one and struck out three. Faces the heart of the North Dakota lineup in its last chance to keep the season going. Strike one to Caden Nelson, who tripled 
in a run back in the third and scored at that time the go-ahead run for Fargo. It will be Caden Nelson, Skyler Burkhart, and Dylan Salberg, unless there are pinch hitters. All three have made good contact tonight. Nelson has his run scoring triple. Burkhardt a hit off the pitcher. And Salzburg, besides a sacrifice, and a line drive right at the pitcher. Fargo limited to four hits in two games. No better time than now to try to get it going and find the offense again. One two pitch. Out in front of the pitcher. Tough play coming up. It's going to be safe. Great try by Colton Simmons. Being left handed wasn't going to be easy. Let's hope he's okay. was going to try to catch and throw with his best angle couldn't do it base hit tying run out of the plate Skyler Burkhart strike one the kid that his manager says just goes about his business Trying to get aboard here. A long one would tie the game. And in this outfield, if you can get one in defense, well, we've seen possibilities of inside the park home runs. Down the left field line. That one to the fence. Run around second. Run around third, heading home. Stand up double. 5 4 game. Now the ball bounces away. Runner heading to third. He is five. And that's the tying run. Skyler Burkhardt comes through. Doubles to the fence and left. Caden Nelson scores. And on the throw in, advances to third with nobody out. Talk about all that area in this ballpark, and there's a lot. You can find a spot. And Skyler Burkhart did. They are now within 60 feet of tying the game. So that throw home allowing the runner to advance from second to third here. And it's going to give North Dakota some chances to tie the game. We'll come back with the great theater here in the sixth inning. Hey, Tom. Pitching change for Kansas. Tom. Taking over on the hill, 13. If we go extra Brogan. innings, what's the rule on extra and innings? Base, Is it conventional Jones. baseball then in the eighth you place a runner on? Does that sound right? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, that's fine. And I just want to make sure I got it right, so, okay. <laughs> well, we should have known that. At least you didn't make dinner reservations, you know? <laughs> that's funny. Five ten, one hundred thirty pound right hander Christian Krogan in a spot. Tying run for North Dakota at third base. Nobody out. Dylan Salberg, who started this game now at the plate. Skyler Burkhart is the tying run at third. Among other things, the runner at third has got to be aware of the fact that even on a wild pitch, the ball has a tendency to come back very quickly. 
you've got at least a couple outs to spare to get that tying run in. Infield in right now. Try to choke off that tying run. Good one tonight in an elimination game. Nobody wants to go home yet. Can't blame them. Dylan Stahlberg, good looking bunt in the second, a sacrifice and lined out in the fourth. Pulled in infield. Opposite way, ball and two strikes. Christian Krogan pitched an inning in the third against Minnesota. Gave up three runs, four hits. Did manage to strike out three of the four he retired. In a bigger spot here, though. The one two. And Dylan, Dill, hanging tough. So the throw in off the double allowed the runs to advance to third base. Looming big right now for North Dakota's chances to tie the game. 2-2 pitch, third base. They're going home with it. Throws high, he's safe. Runner in the meantime headed to second base. That's the fourth Kansas error of the night. And the game is tied. Dylan Salberg now at second base, representing the winning run. First baseman, 14, Peyton Osbaugh. Peyton Osbaugh to the plate. Right idea to home plate. And as he was able to get the ball out, Schremer threw it high. And in the meantime, Salberg advanced to second. So the infield was positioned well. Play didn't happen defensively the way they wanted to. Ball and a strike. The winner against Missouri tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern. Ball and two strikes. North Dakota rallying for the second time today in a big spot. Down to its last three outs. Right now this inning, nobody out. Sometimes you get great theater from an elimination game and we got it tonight. From the stretch again the one two. Number 14, and not given any ground here. Dale Salberg, winning run at second. Base hit, it's gonna win the ball game. Game over, Fargo moving on. Super tough ending for Kansas, which had a terrific run in its state tournament, rallying the last inning to win, and a gallant effort here tonight. But smiling coaches, gonna salute. A gallant effort by Kansas, and back at them. Great effort by Kansas, though. And for North Dakota, <laughs> Rolling around, getting ready for tomorrow night. Why not? What a finish tonight, huh? Another look at Peyton Omsbaugh's hit into the gap. Dill Salberg around third, easily scoring. And North Dakota rallying for the second time tonight with a three-run sixth. Wins it with a walk-off, 6-5. And at that point, even if the ball had been come up with, it wouldn't have mattered. Because Dill was around third base and already 
ready to celebrate. So we were teammates. So a good one tonight in the Midwest. One team is out, and at this particular point, six remain. That'll be Fargo. They'll get a chance tomorrow night against Columbia, Missouri. Hope you enjoyed it tonight. It was a thriller here at Whitestown, Indiana's Little League Complex. And more baseball tomorrow. Four elimination games, all starting at 10 in the morning. Hope you can join us for all or part of our exclusive coverage of Little League Baseball on to the World Series. Thanks for joining us tonight. And good night from Whitestown, Indiana in central Indiana.